Hi guys, it's Laura. Um, so we're still experimenting with other uh, types of pours here. This one I'm going to do today is a tree ring pour with a split cup. I got a new tool, so I wanted to show you how it worked. We're going to just put down a little bit of base paint here just so that the paint has something to roll over. Um, I am in the process of figuring out my recipe for this, and I think I have it. And um, I did the two vases, um, what you call it? Uh, the vase on the... Um, the canvas and that was I did one that was a dirty pour with all the paints poured into one cup and then pouring onto the vase by that and it just got all muddied up so I didn't like that then I did a straight pour which is just pouring the different colors right out of their cup and not mixing them together and I really like that that's a more abstract um, sort of thing. And then, um, so I wanted to try that recipe with this tree ring pour. And if this works out well, which I think it will, um, then we will know we have our recipe down pat because the tree ring pour and the vase pour are both the same recipe for the most part. So I'm just putting this on here so that when we go to tilt this um, this tree ring pour that we're about to do, split cup, it will tilt well. So that is that. Now I'm gonna show you the little gadget. This is a split cup. I just got it from Florida, ordered it, because I've really been wanting to try one of these. So it's got five different little sections in there. You put five different colors, so you can see we have a white, a dark purple, a medium purple, a black, and a lime green. And what happens is this pours out, you're about to see. I have not done one of these successfully before. So we're going to let this start and what we're going to do is we're going to go in a circle and it's going to be white first because now what you want to do is you want to pour as slow as you can and you want to go in a circle and this is working fabulously now I'm going to go the other way And if you have the right thickness, these paints want to be a little bit thicker. So, I'm sorry, I have to concentrate. You want them to be a little bit thicker so that they retain the lines. And luckily, so far, I am retaining the lines. And I'm going to travel a little bit with this. I'm going to lose some of this off the edge, but I wanted to do something 
different. This is going to be cute. Pours really well. I have too much paint here. I'm going to stop right there. Uh, it's just about gone too. So this is good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pick it up and we're going to tilt a little bit. And what I am, I'm okay with the, um, the bigger swirls out to the edges, but what I would like to see is that in that center, it retains the lines and it is so this tells me i finally have the recipe right the lines are not disappearing in amongst themselves and that's what i was shooting for i was trying to get the correct mixture so what it ended up being was one part Floetrol, one part paint, and one part, um, a half a part, maybe not even, of water. Because the original one I did was five parts paint, five parts Floetrol, five parts paint, three parts flow. no, I'm sorry, five parts Floetrol, three parts paint, and two parts water and it was just so watery that it just lost all the lines so this is see how the green and the purple and the black and white in the center are keeping those lines that is perfect so i'm trying to decide what i want to do here i think we'll tilt it a little bit this way so that we kind of have equal parts of dark purple everywhere. And I like this. I am happy with it. Something different, different color combination. Let me get my paper towels. It's pretty, but you can see that it retained those lines and that is what I've been working on this weekend. You see all different kinds of recipes on um, the internet and they're not always all going to work for you because you have a different climate, you might have a different temperature, what works for people in really hot Florida may not work for people in colder Ohio, um, humidity. So there's, there's all kinds of things that can make a painting not work for you, a recipe not work for you. And you have to find what works best for you. So we um, can clearly see, let me get you down off of here. This is my last experiment with this. I am finally happy with the recipe. So, here we go. Really pretty. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to show you those lines. You see how the lines retained their character? That's what we were going for with a tree ring. So, again, this is a split cup tree ring pour. It's kind of modified when I did those, those bigger areas um the bigger swirls out around the edges but i really like it it's very different very unique so i'm happy with it and i use this same recipe this tree ring pour recipe for this vase so now i know that i have it because the vase did really well and um so I'm happy. I actually discovered what I needed to discover this weekend. And now I have my pour and uh, my recipe and I can go from here. So 
Thank you for watching. Um, it just shows you how you have to experiment to find what works for you because not everything will work for you. And in my case, it didn't. So I had to knuckle down and figure it out. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.